Hello, everyone, and welcome to Channel 781 Weekly News. In Waltham last week was the Waltham High School graduation, so congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, this past Saturday was uh, Waltham Pride, the first one ever on the Commons, so we'll talk about that. Um, and in the school committee, they've been discussing the budget, and we'd like to give you some more background on that. And uh, we'll also talk about what happened in the long-term debt committee meeting and the committee of the whole meeting this week. I have a little bit of an update on pot shops and we want to talk a little bit more about housing and evictions as well. So plenty to talk about today. So yes, you may have noticed we changed our name and we're slightly changing our format. The folks at the network thought that the city council did not have the star power to carry their own show. That's not really why. It's because as you've seen, sometimes there's a lot to talk about in city council and sometimes there's not. So we've been using that time to talk about other things going on in the community. So now we're just making that official. Uh, in the past, we were trying to do a complete record of the city council. And as we discussed the past couple of weeks, that's not really possible because of meetings that we can't go to. Um, so instead of trying to give you a complete record of the city council, we're gonna give you the highlights and we're gonna give you the highlights of other things um, going on in town too. So I'm here with Chris Gamble. Hello everyone. And James Creek Kelly. Hello everyone. And um, so, uh, first, let's talk about community events. And this uh, is a lot easier now because I'm happy to say somebody on Reddit named uh, Hammer Patriot uh, decided to start posting community events here. So all I have to do, so that makes it a lot easier for us. Um, so Pride was this past weekend. This coming weekend, June 11th, is the Italian Festival, 10 to 5 on the Common. Uh, Friday and Saturday, the 17th and 18th, is the Waltham River Fest. That's Waltham's big event um, with lots of vendors and lots of activities. Um, on the 19th, Waltham Black Future Fund is doing a cookout. Um, I'm not sure where that is, actually. I, oh, on the Waltham Community Farm. That's right. And there is also a Juneteenth celebration on Monday the 20th on the Common, which is co-sponsored by the Boys and Girls Club and Waltham Black Future Fund. And on Saturday, June 25th, there's the Moody Street Art Walk um, from 11 to 1230. On Saturday, June 25th also is the Waltham Children's Business Fair at 3 p.m. And the Farmer's Market is back Saturdays, 9.30 to 2 p.m on Moody Street. So there are, there are our community events. And uh, I'd love to talk a little bit about Pride. Uh, this That was this past Saturday. Uh, this We are not gonna be objective about this because Chris and I were on the organizing team and James was there and we all had an awesome time. I think it was a huge success. I don't know what you guys have for estimates, but I've heard people estimate we had about 500 people. Um, we had a amazingly all ages crowd. There were a lot of teenagers there. There were a lot of younger kids there and everyone seemed into it. Um, we had some really great uh, guest speakers. Um, a lot of people were really excited about Brenda Pena, the principal from the high school being there to speak and she gave a great talk. The mayor was there and gave a very uh, short but very nice talk. And uh, the entertainment was also really amazing. And we had uh, Missy Stake was the headliner. She's a drag performer. And if you're wondering how drag works on a town common, then you haven't, she, she had the answer. She, she rocked the common um, and people seemed incredibly grateful to be able to see that performance. So I thought it was a big success. What did you think, Chris? Uh, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think just all across the board, it exceeded my expectations in every way. Um, so pleased with how it turned out. Um, I guess the only thing that uh, you didn't say, and I wasn't expecting at all going into it, you know, I was expecting like to be impressed with all the performers and all the tables, uh, which is also something to mention. We had a great tabling organization. They had like 17 groups, uh, a few people selling things, a few people just coming for resources, but everyone said they had a great time. Um, very happy about that. But also I wasn't expecting to feel such a nice feeling about how many young people were there and just feeling really good about them being able to express themselves in such a way. I wasn't really expecting that going in, but it really, a really nice, wholesome feeling about that. 
Um, but all across the board is awesome. And really, I think we're just going to uh, keep building on that momentum and uh, continue doing things, especially another Pride next year, even bigger. Any thoughts, James? Yeah, it was there. It was great. Good performances from all around. Uh, I think Greer was, that was pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah, it was awesome. And great way to spend an afternoon on the common, listening to music. And uh, there is also now a pride flag up on City Hall uh, as of last Friday. Um, and that was the work of the mayor and uh, Councillor Paz and Councillor Bradley MacArthur and our friend Emily Superia who helped them coordinate that. So that's awesome. And then um, in the Committee of the Whole uh, this week, there was a discussion of the Pride Resolution that was introduced um, by Councillor Bradley MacArthur. It was uh, co-sponsored by Councillor Paz, Councillor Cates, Darcy, Stanley, and Dunn, um, all signed on to the Pride Resolution. So it was discussed in um, Committee of the Whole. Um, I encourage you to check out the text of it. I thought it was interesting because it explicitly calls out uh, homophobia and transphobia phobia in Waltham. And in the past, sometimes the council has been a little reluctant to acknowledge things like that locally. So I hope that's the beginning of a trend. That's great for the queer community, but there are other communities too that, that need to have those things acknowledged. So the Committee of the Whole voted to approve it. The only question was from um, Councillor Lafasi, who I guess the, the resolution said there were going to be multiple flags in different places in town. And in fact, the mayor put up one on City Hall. So he wanted to know if there were going to be more flags. I don't really know why he wanted to know that. But otherwise, there didn't seem to be any push back on the resolution and they brought in the mayor to clarify uh, about she's only in charge of what flag goes on City Hall. If people want flags somewhere else, that's somebody else. Uh, but she complimented the event and she complimented the shirts, which I also really like. She was very, the mayor was very impressed by those. Um, so yeah, thank you to uh, those counselors for putting forward that resolution. I think it, it means a lot to the community. Can I, can I make a plug? Yes. Um, so yeah, I just want to make a quick plug for Channel 781 News. We're always looking for people to get involved. I'm um, always looking to expand our horizon. Uh, you know, we talk about a lot about city council, but we, I would really like to get more into just, you know, uh, cultural aspects of Waltham. I'd really like to get more into entertainment uh, reviews, really more talking to people. Uh, my pipe dream is to really get on the ground reporting done. Um, so if you want to talk to people, more than I do, then you should get in contact with us and we can do good work together um, in this project. Thank you. Yes, I second that. We would, as we're changing our name and trying to expand what we do, we definitely could use more help. We have more subjects to cover. Ideally, people who want to either go to a meeting and re or research a subject and then talk about it on the show, that's great because then we can ask you questions and stuff. If you don't want to be on the show, but you want to help us research topics, that's really helpful too. So feel free to get in touch. And speaking of which, uh, so in a previous show, we were discovered that um, while most of the meetings in Waltham, the city meetings are announced online, some are only announced on the bulletin board outside City Hall. So I had said sort of half sarcastically, what are we going to do? Are we going to get a volunteer to go check? the bulletin board every two days. And amazingly, we actually did get a volunteer to do that on Reddit. Um, so thank you very much to that person who is now sending me photos of the bulletin board. And I am posting on the Waltham Data Medium channel um, the any meetings uh, that are on there that weren't on the previous one. So you can go, I don't cross check to see which ones were also announced online, but if you want to see a more complete list of upcoming meetings, go to the Waltham Data Medium channel. Um, and that's exciting news. And uh, so thank you to that person. Thank you to the person who's doing the events, but we could still use more help uh, to bring you everything that's going on in town. Uh, in the com committee meetings, um, last night, city council committee meetings, there was a long-term debt meeting. Chris, can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, me and uh, James uh, attended the long-term debt uh, capital planning committee. Um, if you follow us on YouTube, you got a ping on your phone. It said we went live, uh, which James is always good about. I'm never, I never remember to actually go live. Um, pretty boring meeting, but a couple of things that were talked about. Um, I guess I could share my screen just to bring up the docket that was talked about. Um, this was for um, city departments that had to come 
plea for funds that were kind of one-offs that didn't make it into the budget. Um, so these are just nominal things that had to, they had to come and say why they wanted them. And I mean, it's kind of boring. The only thing is election poll pads. Uh, so you can look up the, your name and uh, address uh, for every election um, electronically, um, which other cities have been doing for years and years and years. Um, so we're actually gonna uh, acquire those, which is great. Um, and you know, just just again, I, I love just pointing out uh, the lack of frugality in the city government uh, until you know it's something that actually helps people, and then all of a sudden we have a microscope on uh, funds. But I mean, just like copier and scanner, seven thousand dollars. I'm pretty sure I can acquire a copier for less than seven thousand dollars. But no one really talks about that. You know, no one really, no one, you know, no one's like, could we go cheaper? No, no, we just, we just. You know, you go through a Wayfair catalog and we just click it and then it's ours uh, because it's the government money. No one really cares until it's actually helping people. Um, I will say this is the mayor's budget. And so the city council is like, OK, well, the mayor thinks that that's enough. Uh, but again, I mean, when everyone says and if anyone ever says they're a financial watchdog, what they mean is that they don't want to help people. That's really what it means, because everything else, no one ever checks. I, didn't, I did say I didn't have much to say on this, but I was going to point out that IT expenses tend to have extra stuff baked into the cost, like, uh, like just like being able to acquire them uh, in, like for, for like periods of time. And like, I think that they tend to roll in like warranties and like extended warranties and stuff like that. So I can at least excuse some of those expenses because you want to make sure that that printer or copper you get will be repaired for n years in the future. But like the 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 amount of expenses that go into roads in general is just like mind boggling, especially when you think about it, like at the scale that is happening in the city. And then like just how much of that is in service for through traffic that doesn't really benefit Waltham at all, other than increasing noise and wear and tear on the city infrastructure. So that's my thoughts. I have an update for people who are following the issue of pot shops. Um, so two weeks ago, there was uh, a few weeks ago, there was a hearing um, for Middlesex Integrative Medicine, which is one of the businesses um, that wants to open a dispensary in Waltham. It's like the other ones, they already did a public hearing back when they first applied. And so this was a repeat of the hearing. They seem to be repeating all of them. So uh, Chris did not really, and James, I wasn't on the show that week and Chris and James found this boring, <laughs> which I sympathize with because the hearings themselves are kind of boring. Um, but our friend, and Emily Sapiria was also watching this and she noticed two things that were really interesting that came up in this. One was that it was mentioned that Middlesex Integrative Medicine already has a host community agreement um, with the mayor. So as you may remember, there's two things you need um, to open a dispensary. You need a special permit from the council and you need a host community agreement from the mayor. And I was under the impression none of the businesses had that. And in fact, um, Christine Mackin, when she was on the show, told us she had heard the mayor say that she wasn't interested in doing any of those. Um, but according to a comment in this meeting, they already have one. And so that raises the question of which other businesses have one and why, why do some have them and don't. So uh, that's not an easy thing to look up. So I'll continue to find out, try to find out the answer to that. Um, but the other thing that came up was they referenced that in a traffic uh, committee meeting, which happened last week, they were going to be reviewing the traffic study that you may remember all the businesses were waiting on because it was requested by the council. So fortunately, that traffic uh, meeting was recorded. So I watched it. Um, it was very interesting. The engineer, the traffic committee had, um, traffic commission, I'm sorry, had asked, uh, hired an engineer to study this. And he gave a report and he had an actually really interesting infographic, which showed that if the pot shops are built, uh, the traffic will get a lot worse. And if the pot shops are not built, the traffic will still get a lot worse. <laughs> so basically what he showed, so first I should say, this was specifically about four businesses that are proposed for the Bear Hill area. There's a fifth business that was not included in this because it's not exactly in that area. It's on Main Street. It's gonna be on Main Street um, on the east side of the highway, kind of across from Market Basket. So the four businesses on Bear Hill um, were covered by this. And basically 
basically what they found was that they would have no significant impact on the traffic because there are going to be significant changes to the traffic, but that's coming primarily from the 1065 Main Street project. So for those who don't, don't know, 1065 Main Street is the market basket plaza, but that property is actually much bigger and it's being developed in phases. And um, that project is, according to the engineer, what will drastically change the traffic patterns in um, Bear Hill area. So uh, Councillor Darcy and Councillor Harris were there from the committee that requested the study, and they were not happy with this. Oh, because, well, what I sh should mention, the, the report specifically said um, that there could not recommend any mitigations that the pot shops could do that would fix things. They, it said that the mitigation that the city could do would be to repave the sidewalks on Bear Hill because they're very uh, not very good for pedestrians and provide a bike lane on Bear Hill Road. That would mitigate traffic, but they didn't say anything that the businesses themselves could do to mitigate traffic. So Councillor Darcy and Councillor Harris were not happy with that because in, they said that's what they wanted out of this study. They wanted suggestions of mitigations such as smart, uh, smart traffic lights was one example they gave of a mitigation that they could then ask those businesses to pay for as part of getting their special permit. But the Traffic Commission voted to accept the study anyways because the engineer did what he was asked to do. So they seemed unhappy with that. And then they had a little bit of a huddle with the mayor. So it seems like there were, those two counselors are working with the mayor on these issues. And the mayor came back and made an odd comment about how she doesn't want 1065 to get hit over the head. She doesn't want, meaning she didn't want people making negative comments about the developers of 1065, implying that they're causing the traffic because they already did committed to all kinds of things to mitigate the traffic. It was kind of odd because nobody was attacking <laughs> 1065, but she apparently is sensitive about how people perceive that. And then she also came back to clarify that it wasn't the owner of 1065 who did that, it was the collaborative of investors. For some reason, there's a collaborative of investors who are doing this project and, and the, apparently the owner of the property must be someone who is well known and doesn't want to be associated with it publicly because it seems like whenever it comes up, um, there's some sensitivity about the language that's used. Uh, in any case, it, seem, I, it seems like probably what Councillor Harris and Councillor Darcy are dealing with are they have constituents in that area who say the traffic's already going to get worse. If you approve these pot shops, you'll make it worse. And it seemed clear that they wanted to be able to make the businesses do some kind of mitigation. Um, so it's not clear how this is going to affect the process. And if it's true that there at least one business already has a host community agreement that suggests that they've already decided behind the scenes who they're giving it to and they're only giving it to four and there are five applicants so they have to reject if they would not make sense to reject the one on main street because no one seems concerned about the traffic so they have to reject one of the applicants on bear hill and the process it seems like maybe there's a process for here that hasn't been totally transparent any comments on that boring subject chris or james james go ahead uh, I, I recall that this is also in the same area where the 128 project is going to be happening too. So it's going to be interesting to see what the ultimate impact is to the traffic in the area, because you're going to have a lot of like people now directly getting off 128, getting onto Main Street in exactly that area, trying to get into Boston. Yeah, we talked about it in the last debrief. It's uh, projected to be rated an F. Uh, by the traffic commission and they have no real ways to solve it. There's no practical ways to solve it on the table right now. They're not, they're not mitigating it. And it's just gonna get so much worse uh, in like five years. That's just gonna be absolutely awful. And it, it's all gonna run downhill into and everything else too from there. It's, it's gonna be that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like uh, all along the pot shop. I kind of, we didn't realize they've all been caught up in a bigger issue of developments that have already been approved and how they're going to impact that neighborhood. So it'll be interesting to see how the council deals with it because there are probably have constituents who don't want this approved for that reason, but the uh, traffic report did not say what they wanted it to say. 
so speaking of the council, moving back to this week's meeting and the committee of the whole, they also had a rather lengthy discussion about tables and chairs on Moody Street. James, can you tell us more about that? And this was mostly the mayor uh, coming in to inform the council. I guess that there had already been a vote on this from the traffic commission, uh, sort of like the, just basically clarifying that they were in line with like the state COVID stat status was, and that, uh, that I guess that people putting at tables and chairs would be pursuing that uh, with it, like through the council basically, and. Kind of the mayor did also mention that COVID is over for some people, which I guess is, is part of part of this. So, but it, the, uh, normally this goes through like uh, like licensing and stuff. Like it's, it's like treated as like an increase in floor area for the for the building, and I guess with the closing of Main Main Street or uh, sorry Moody Street, this is more of like a streamlined process or intended to be. Chris, did you have anything to add to that? Okay, so the other thing that happened last week is the Waltham Educators Association put up a petition um, asking people to uh, sign a petition to oppose budget cuts to the school system. Um, there was also a petition that went up started by a student at the high school to asking them not to lay off a specific teacher, um, Ms. Rafferty, who's a really popular teacher at the school. So we tried to get some more background on this. We have a volunteer who's been going to the school committee meetings. And from what I understand, the budget conversation has been back and forth in the school committee for a while. Some of it happens in the school committee meeting, but some of it also happens in budget workshops, which it's not clear, according to our volunteer, as far as she knows, those aren't announced to the public. So there's kind of been a conversation that has been partially in public and partly not. Um, but basically what I learned from her is that the superintendent had requested a budget of 101 approximately million dollars. And the mayor asked him to cut that by about 2.2 million dollars. There were various ways um, that he went about doing that, but partly it was by he had hoped to hire additional teachers, so he took that out, so they wouldn't be hiring additional teachers. There are two teachers who are being laid off, and that's technically not because of these budget cuts. That's because they're going to a four-day uh, school schedule, and that school schedule is part of a long process that's been going on. It's partly to save money, but it's also part of sort of a long process of trying to create a better system and the, apparently there's a, a private firm that the school the school system is working with to help them come up with a good schedule and what they had last year was not quite working so that's why they're going um, to four days so technically no teachers are getting laid off because of this uh, budget um, that's being discussed now however there were teachers who would have been hired who won't be and there are two teachers being laid off um, so what how it stands now is that the um, after some back and forth the school committee did vote to approve that budget with the cut so that uh, the next step I believe is for it to go to the council and usually the council just votes yes or no on what the um, school committee asked for uh, they don't go into line items um, so uh, uh, there is some urgency then uh, to if we want to try to prevent uh, these cuts from happening um, to sign on to that petition and uh, keep an eye on Waltham Educators Association, the information that they're putting out. All this being said, I wish we had more info on this. I wish we had someone we could ask questions. Uh, so if anyone is interested in coming on the show or giving us some more background on this, we'd love to have you. Um, James or Chris, uh, did you have any comments on that? Yeah, I think. Um... I think what's being uh, a lot of the comments uh, being discussed are the superintendent's um, budget, um, but you know that's a misnomer because this is a budget that was passed through all of the schools, and all of the schools uh, decided this is the budget that works for the students, um, and this is the money we need to accomplish this. And then the last person to put a check mark on it was a superintendent and now all of a sudden it's the superintendent's budget but it's really it's the it's all of the teachers it's all the schools it's the union's budget that is what they decided on um this is what the teachers wanted this is what the teachers decided and the mayor is basically 
saying no. It's a big slap in the face of the teachers and the educators uh, of Waltham. And there's also very little precedent for this. It's very, very rare. Um, it, I believe never happened that it was like $2 million difference that they had to figure out. Um, and so this is a big deal. Uh, we are gonna cover it more. Um, we just have to do our jobs of uh, reporting on it. Yeah, thank you, Chris, for that context. So yeah, so when we, the budget proposed by the superintendent is basically the system saying what they need. And when it comes to the other city departments, they go through a process where the department says what they need. And then often the mayor cuts stuff from that before she sends it to the or city council for approval. So when we're talking about these cuts that the mayor asked for, from her point of view, this may just be a standard thing that you always do, but it really does have real effects. And uh, so what it comes down to is we can't give you a very nuanced explanation of what's being cut because we haven't been to the meetings, but what's happening is they're being asked to settle for $2.2 million less than what they said they needed. And I think it's worth thinking about, you know, how people might react if certain other departments were asked to accept um, that much less than what they said they needed. And uh, now is a really good time to be standing up for teachers um, in the same way that people sometimes stand up for other departments. And then the last thing I wanted to cover today is not exactly in response to something that happened last week. It's something I've been trying to research and it's not an easy thing to find info on, but I wanted to bring it up and maybe we can get someone on the show who has more info. Property values are very high in Waltham right now, as in a lot of places. And it's not unusual for homeowners and landlords to, even when they don't have their house on the market, to get calls from real estate agents saying, hey, have you you thought about selling because it's worth a lot of money or to get calls from commercial companies that are selling, buying and reselling houses to make money. Um, and so that, you know, they, certainly there are advantages to the city of having high real estate values, uh, since that's what our taxes are based on. Um, but there are also definitely some disadvantages of it. And that's what I'd like to learn more about. One of those is that if you're a renter, you may have people calling your landlord trying to convince them to sell so that they can flip the house. And that may mean you can't be in it. So you get evicted. And a lot of the people we know who are very involved in the Waltham community are renters. And in fact, this did happen to two good friends of ours who uh, their place was bought, who were very involved in the Waltham community for many years. And now they don't live in Waltham anymore uh, because somebody bought their place to flip it. And the, I looked up the family that did it, that, that bought it. Um, they also live in Waltham. They have a huge house. Um, and they say on their LinkedIn that this is what they do. They're flippers and they do something called buy and hold, which as I understand means you buy a house and you just wait for it to go up in value without actually adding any value to it. Um, so what this means is that, you know, one family that has a huge house and there's four families who lived in this building that our friends lived in and four families have to move so that one family can make some more money. Uh, so this is something I'm concerned about, but I'm not an economist, so it's hard for me to uh, research. Is this really a trend and how big a trend is it? Um, but one thing we do know about that could be potentially uh, that's relevant to this is that Watch CDC um, put forward a resolution, meaning any city councilor could pick it up and put it in the city council and it could become an ordinance, but no city councilor has done that yet. And this resolution, so what, during the early days of the pandemic, there was a rule that if you were being evicted, um, the landlord had to provide you with some information. If you got a notice to be out in 30 days and you can't be out in 30 days, there are certain, you have some recourse. And Massachusetts is has a reputation as having a good system to, to protect renters, but only if you know about it. Um, and so that expired. So watch CDC wants to make it a town ordinance that landlords have to provide that. And it, I don't see any good reason not to do it. Um, I know that the city council has to represent landlords interests as well. Um, but we already have protections in place for renters. This is just letting them know about it. 
Um, and it seems a little unfair that certain people, which may include people who are new to town or new to the country, are more likely to get evicted because they just don't know about this. So I'd like to put out a call for a counselor to put forward that um, resolution in the council, but I'd also like to put out a call if anyone out there is an expert in real estate or any of the issues related to what I just talked about, and you can help us understand um, to what extent is this a problem in Waltham and what could and should the community do about it? We'd love to hear from you. Any comments on that? The uh, real estate in general, it, it, prices have been going crazy. And it's funny you mentioned like the, the buying and holding. I've been living next door to a, a property that has been basically having exactly that happen with not even being rented out just because it is like was too expensive to repair. So they just, basically let it sit and bolt into ruin until they sold it and now it's going to get knocked down and a new thing is going to get put up eventually but who knows how long that's going to take and the, the, the you know it's you know gentrification getting people pushed out to build you know expensive new properties to attract a new clientele to live in the city and that's just what we're seeing. It would be interesting to get some more outside opinions on this, though, at least to get more information and perspective on how, like, how it's playing out in the city, in our, in our city. But it's th this is very much the trend in the rest of the country. I feel, I feel, and it's people that can afford to move out from other parts of the country moving in here, displacing people that can't afford to live here more often than not. All right. Well, hopefully we'll be talking more about that in the future with some more info to go on. Thank you very much. That is our show. And we will be back next week. We'll cover the full city council meeting, but we'll also have updates on other things going on in town for you. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.